Let's start the story with today's designer, Tammy Hahnemann, who combines precious metal clay with colorful crystals. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Katie. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. It's great to have you. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. Glad to have you on the show. It's going to be a great season, and you are going to start us outright because everyone has been asking about metal clay. Wonderful. It's a wonderful material to work with, and a lot of people ask about adding crystals to metal clay. Yeah, let's take a look at your necklace. This is beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was a lot of fun to put that together. Super colorful, and you can see that it has crystals right down the seam. Yes, and those go in after because crystals don't survive the kiln firing, so it's just a matter of figuring out how to engineer the piece to get those crystals to be able to be put in there. Oh good, well I'm glad you dispelled the mystery right up front. Right up front. Okay, get so how do we get started? All right, before you open metal clay, it's really good to prep your work surface and all your materials. So because we're going to be making a tube, we need to cover it with a nonstick sheet. And that'll just give us a way to put the clay onto a form and then be able to remove it later. Okay. So we'll just use a piece of tape to put that nonstick sheet on the tube. And is this just the tube from the hardware store or is it this a is. special? Just I love it. Brass tubing. Great. Yep. Now that gives us our form. And now to prep our surface. This is a nonstick material that goes on just like a like a bomb. And you just rub it onto the work surface. And that'll just give it a nice release property so the clay doesn't stick to it. Okay. And you coat your tools. And Is your... it important to use any particular material for that? You can use olive oil. Uh, this product was manufactured specifically for use with metal clay. Oh, all right. So it, uh, it works really well Great. for what it's supposed to do. Make sure you have everything ready. Uh, the textures we're going to be using, I've sprayed with a, also a nonstick release material, and that needs to dry. So you just do that ahead of time once you choose your textures. Oh, I bet that's a hard process because there are so many to choose from. That is a hard process. You could even hard. make your own texture, right? Oh, for sure. You can carve polymer clay. You can make molds using silicone, two-part molding compound. Oh, we might compound. have to do that on another show. It <laughs> sounds good. Uh, OK, so we're going to open up the clay. And we're going to just take off probably about half of this piece, give us some texture to work with. And I'll wrap it back up just because it is an air dry product. You don't want it to dry out ahead of time. I'm just shaping it just to give me uh, a, you know, a general square rectangular shape. OK. And for our viewers who have never seen metal clay before, it's different from polymer clay. It is very different. This is a material that's made out of fine particles of fine silver an organic binder, and water. And it has to be fired at a very high temperature. So you need to fire it in a kiln. There are special kinds that you use with a torch, too. That is but correct. This particular one, you would need a kiln. You can use this uh, same brand with a torch. Oh, you can. You sure can. Uh, it's really dictated by the size okay. of the piece, what can be done with a kiln or a torch. So this was rolled out to what we consider five cards thick. And that's what your measuring sticks are. It's kind correct. of the height of five playing cards, right? That is correct. That is correct. And you couldn't use playing cards. Uh, these just are a little more portable and uh, colorful. That's right. <laughs> and now I'm rolling it out to three cards thick, and that'll take it from the five to the three and allow that texture to be put into the material. Okay. And then the magic will peel it from there. That and looks great. Is that cool? And metal clay takes texture really well, which it makes it so fun to work with. All right, so we're going for oh, a rectangular shape. And that's why you have your grid here, huh? That, the grid is wonderful. And because we're going to be wrapping and making it around a tube, I want to go for length. So I'll just cut a straight edge. And this is um, a clay blade or a tissue blade. So it's nice and sharp, but you do need to use care when you're working with it. Uh, go here, cut that away. Okay. And so then, this part that we're making that you're going to be wrapping around the tube is the top of the tassel. That is correct. All right, and now I will wrap that around the tube. And I want to keep it straight as possible. Wrap that around. And then, of course, I have overlap, which is really what we're going for then that'll allow me to trim the ends so that they're straight. OK, so it's kind of the old wallpaper trick. You're cutting the two pieces together so they're perfectly matched. Correct. And that'll give me a little bit of an overlap, so it also gives me material to work with when I'm seal, you know, sealing them up together. OK. And then 
looks like I need to cut a little bit more. So you want to take away any of that extra material? Yeah. Check the seam. Good. And now I'll use some water. Metal clay likes to um, do what it wants to do, not necessarily what you want it to. So we just need to coerce it a little bit with some water. Water and pressure will help join those two ends together. And now because we use texture though, we do want to um, be careful with the amount of pressure we're going to be applying. You don't want to take away your pretty texture now that you have it on there. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm going to set that aside just for now. And then I'll roll out another piece. All right, and so which part are we rolling out now? We're going to do um, the part for the seam. And we will, you know what, I'll do a little bit more clay and we'll do the top of, okay. the, of the tassel tube. Let me get a good piece here. And here, why don't you pick a texture? Oh, I get to choose. You get to choose. Yay. I think this is the one that's on the sample. That I we... like that one a lot. That is the first one I saw, so let's use that one. Okay. Oh wait, I need to do this to five. So you roll it out and then... Yeah, that's a nice there amount. There you go. Yeah. And then we'll take it down to three. When you use your texture... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And when you put this on here? Yes, thank oh, you. Okay. So there are different kinds of texture plates you can use. You can use the folder type like you had, or mm -hmm. you can use this one. You could oh, yeah. use rubber stamps. Oh, yeah. You can use yeah. all kinds of things to make your own texture. Yep. This is nice. It gives it a really finished look when it's fired. Well, and the textures are so beautiful. And the detail, because the metal clay shrinks, this, this brand particularly um, shrinks about 10%. It really tightens up all that texture. All right. So we'll do the first the seam part, because we want that to set up a little bit. So I'm just going to very quickly cut a small strip. And the, um, the reason for this is because we're going to be um, putting depressions into the seam in this area that'll then accommodate the crystals. Right. Um, and the crystals just need a little bit of room. All right. All right. So, so you have your double layer. Yeah. And again, we'll just do some water. We want these two to be happy together. For some reason, I thought you would have to use some kind of slip, you know, like a wet clay. We, and we do use slip in different applications, but because both of these are wet, they, they marry well together. Okay. Um, slip would definitely be used if the clay was dry or if one was dry and one was wet. All right. So you were spot on. And we'll just compress that seal them together and again it's just water and pressure will help those two layers join and because we use water we just we're going to just set it aside for a little bit oh, okay you're going to let it dry before you make any depressions in it it'll it won't be dry dry but it'll be um just set up it won't more. be as mushy I see. yeah so once the water is absorbed a little less dry <laughs> a little <laughs> less wet <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so we'll just set that aside and now we'll cut the top and you could choose anywhere on the texture that you have. Um, we'll just cut that. All right. And you know what, while we're at it, why don't we cut the leaf? And those, the leaf is going to become part of the dangles, right? Yeah. And let's see, we'll do the bird. And we'll have all the instructions online so everybody can go and check this out afterward when they're making their own. And of course, sometimes, uh, especially with a, like this bird has a lot of parts and points to it, so the clay wants to stick. So we just kind of encourage it to, to Use leave. a pokey tool. <laughs> Use a pokey tool. <laughs> Technical terms. That's right. All right, so now we'll cut out the center. And uh, I do tend to eyeball it, but if you have this grid, you can pretty much find the center. I'll just eyeball it. And that's going to give you a place to hang the pendant, right? Correct. It's integral, very, uh, very much for hanging. Okay. All right, and I'm going to carefully transfer this over to here for now. And um, that's just a doming surface. We'll, we'll address that in a little bit. Let's get back to the clay. Um, all right. And for these other pieces, because they are going to also be hung. They need, they need a little opening. 
So uh, let's see, we'll put a, we'll do a starter hole here. And for the leaf, I'll do a starter hole. And we can enlarge that later. So let's see, we'll trade places. And I'm just going to wrap this clay up so we can come back to that in a bit. Yeah, that's important to say. You always want to wrap it up when you're mm -hmm. not working with it or it will dry out. It will dry fast. out. Very fast. And, you know, that the drying time um, varies depending on the area where you live um, in the time of year. Oh, because know. We have humid conditions in the summer, so the clay doesn't dry as quickly. Um, but in Arizona, it would dry really fast. Super fast. Yeah. All right, so again, to create the depressions for the the chatons for later. This is a setting burr, and it's just in a, a pin vise tool. And I'm just, this size works really well. Let's see, it's a little wet still. Uh, this size works really well for the PP24s. So that's the size of the crystal that you're using, right? That's correct. That sounds like a really technical term for something so small and sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it is, a, it is a technical term. I just know it's PP24, and that's the setting burst size. That's what you need to know. That's what we okay. need to know, yeah. It's a couple millimeters. So you're wetting that down again? It, yeah, it's a little bit. It, I raised it up a little because I was a little um, ahead of myself and coming back to this so quickly. Oh, okay. So you just basically want to make a depression in it. Yeah. And if it comes loose, then you just put it back. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep, and then again, I would just wait and then come back in again just to open it up so that you have a nice uh, area to work with as we right. move along in the process. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. All right, so then the other part that we'll do is create the, um, on top of the dome piece, I have a like a little bit of a donut piece of clay. So that is just. What's that for? To make the piece nice and finished. And a little bit stronger maybe? Uh, it'll maybe definitely not. increase the opening. Okay. Uh, the strength of the opening. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it gives it a nice finished look, but I do agree that it's structural. So we're just going to roll that out. And it's just a, a plain piece of clay, no texture. You could certainly do texture. I never discourage texture. But and you'll we'll, just make your very own little cap. Correct. And I'll just use the same small tube that I used before so that the holes are the same size. Okay. And this will still be wet, so I will just move this here. We won't need to use slip. All the handles are round. I'll just add some water to the area where we're going to add the clay. And my, my center is a little off, or my circle is a little off center. Oh. I'm a little off center too. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> okay. This could be yours. All right. <laughs> we'll make this one. All our viewers out there who need to be more on center, they will use the grid. It will be okay. <laughs> it sounds good. All that, right. Okay, so now we are ready to fire these or no? We're going to let these dry. We are going to let these dry. Okay, and of course we're going to cut out some more shapes that we're going to use for dangles, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. We're going to fire all that. Yes. And then? Then we're going to be adding the crystals. Okay, what do we have to do to these guys? All right, we'll get these guys out of the way. Let these dry. Wrap up this extra clay in case we need it. Get rid of the slats. And I'll take one of those towels, please. Sure. We'll just clean this up a little bit. So what we're going to do is refine the clay. I call it refining. Uh, it's pretty much a common term. And it just means to make it perfect. All right. OK, well, we just have uh, just a few quick seconds to talk about cleaning this up. Okay. Because we want to string that necklace, sister. So what do we do with these? OK. We brush them down? Yep, we use all the polishing papers, uh, salon boards, jeweler's files. And then to assemble the tassel, once everything is filed, we just dip the end into the slip that we were talking about earlier. Oh, right. OK. Get that nice and covered with some slip and set it into our upside down dome piece. Oh, OK. And then let that's that going to hold it for us. Yes, okay. it will. 
All right, we're right. gonna take a quick break, okay. and when we come back, we are going to string that necklace. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to see how to finish this beautiful tassel pendant. Yes. Uh, the pieces have come out of the kiln and they're cool to room temperature. And to burnish the surface, we are, can use a, a brass brush or you can use a burnisher. And you just want to bring up the finish. So and make sure that all the white is off and it's all very shiny. And the white is actually just a uh, non-reflective surface. It's actually not a, a thing. It oh. is just that it's not reflecting light. So you're burnishing it to knock down that surface to make it nice and shiny. I see. And so you can actually even use a tumbler to help with that once you've done the brass brush and it'll come up that shiny. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's all just about the burnishing. You know, I took a class in this and I did not understand that. So that's oh. a great tip. Wonderful. Uh, and then, of course, we want to add our crystals. So before we do that, you need to clean the surface with a degreaser and make sure that the material is ready to receive the glue so that you have a good connection. Using a two-part epoxy, we'll mix that up to the instructions that are on the packaging and then carefully place the chitons into the glue. Some examples that you can see using different colors. And then this one here has all of the colors, the tangerine, and the crystal luminous green. There are so many different ways that you could finish this. Lots of different color ways. And of course, those crystals add a lot of sparkle, and that's really highlighted by the reflective surface on the metal. This is a beautiful idea. Great, thank so you. So how do we put this tassel together? All right, so we're gonna combine some wire mesh ribbon and some shibori ribbon to nice. make the, the, the fiber part. And we're just gonna cut those into some thin strips. And then to gather them up together, rather than tying a knot, we'll just fold the end over. And I like to create different textures so they're not just folded in half. Okay. And then just work the um, center there into a crimp end. Okay, good idea. And then just compress that. And then that'll just make it nice and easy to gather everybody up together once we're ready. Sounds good. All right. And you also make your own chain. You do it all. Well, it's, it's what Completely we do, right? Completely custom, yes. <laughs> I, like, I think it's great. All right, so um, using this handheld jig, we will make our chain. So I have it set up to have uh, circle links. And we'll just start uh, this is 16 gauge wire and we'll just get it anchored so we can get it started. Okay, so now I have it so that the wire is anchored here and then it's ready to be woven over the two circles and it's just going to be simple figure eight. Oh, and you just keep going. Just keep going. Oh. Yeah. That's and, way easier than making each one individually. Oh, for sure. And that's what's really nice about uh, this Tool. Using the jig like that. Yeah. And I have things that's set up a little bit close so you can see the tolerance between the two are a little bit tight, but that really makes a good link. Right. So you just have to be patient and just keep weaving back and forth. Okay. All right. And then you'll remove it and it'll look like that. Cool. And then using cutters, we'll cut the links apart. And then when you are cutting, what you need to just remember is to always use the flush end for the part that's staying. Right. And then just cut the links apart and it'll look like these. Nice. And then before you hammer them, you just want to make sure that all of the layers are on an even plane. All right. And that and everybody's lined up. So then you're going to work hard in this by hammering? Correct. And then it's going to look like this? Yes. Very cool. And so you don't solder this at all? Not at all. All right. So how are these getting attached to each other then? Jump rings. Perfect. Yep. And I used oval jump rings because their seam is on the center of one side, not on an end. So it's less, less likely to open up. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, and so then we have a lot of other elements yes. that are going to become those dangles. Yes. So we uh, incorporated some smaller link chain, and I cut just a few different lengths, again, to just create that dimension. And using jump rings, we're gonna go back to talking about the charms that we made earlier. So here are a few of the charms. And you combine them with all those beautiful crystals. That looks great. Yep, and then just using head pins and um, wrap loops. Okay, so you take this all onto the piece of wire. Mm -hmm. We'll start a wrap loop, gather them all up, get everybody on there and pull it up inside of our tassel top. All right, well, let's take a look at the finished one and you can see how that all comes together. Great. Thanks so much, Tam. This is an awesome oh, project. Thank you, Katie.